Got it. Okay. Good evening and welcome to our last virtual meeting. As long as COVID doesn't make its ugly return. Director Austin is in at the library for government regulations and the rest of us are on Zoom. All the announcements have been posted. And so I would like to call the meeting of the Wilmette Public Library Board of Trustees meeting to order. Can we have a roll call, Director? Sure. Oh. Um, I should say that this is Tuesday, March 15th, and it is 6.32 p.m. Um, here are our trustees. Uh, Trustee Fishman. Here. Trustee Nealon. Here. Trustee O'Keefe. Here. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer. Here. Trustee Wolf. Trustee Wolf, we see you. He's connecting his audio. All right, and Trustee McDonald. Okay. Okay. Um, I also noticed that we are joined by um, Elizabeth Seeger from the League of Women Voters. And I see several staff members on our call as well. I see Jessica Thompson, Linnea Lundberg, Marty Belfontaine, Marcos Levy, Kim Hagland, and John Risco. And I'm Anthony Austin, director of the library. So thank you for the roll call. So at this time, if there's any public that would like to make a comment, please raise your hand. Okay. Being no raised hands, we would like to move on for approval of the minutes from February 15th, 2022nd. Is there a motion? I motion for approval of the minutes of the regular meeting uh, from February 15th, 2022 as presented. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. So it's been moved by Trustee Summer and seconded by Trustee Fishman to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of February 15th, 2022 as presented. Is there any discussion or questions regarding the minutes? Okay. B, can Director Austin, can we have a roll called? Certainly. Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe? Yes. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Raise your hand to say aye. <laughs> Stewart is a, is a yes. And uh, Trustee McDonald? Yes. Thank you. Okay. At this time, there are no presentations. So we will move on to our report, Treasurer Summer. Uh, good evening. Um, I just have a couple of comments. And if anyone has any questions, just either raise your hand, Stuart, or um, indicate. Uh, the, if you read through the footnotes, we are still running slightly below the expected eight month rate. Uh, in the second paragraph of the footnotes, it did say one of the lines said uh, seventh month, but it actually should say eight mo eighth month. Um, PPRT, which is a replacement tax, which I talked about last month, it continues to run well ahead of budget. Uh, the amount we received in March was about 23,000, which covers January and February of 2022. If anybody wants to know any more about it, John Risco and I did a little deep dive into exactly what it can, how, how it's calculated, um, just, but if not, we can continue on. All right, everybody's nodding, that sounds good. Um, as indicated in the notes, there's a check to Shells McNutt in about 60,000. Uh, the project's still running under budget and it is, as in the director's notes, substantially complete. Uh, also in the footnote, CD rates are rising, which is great news for our investment. And my last comment is in the last paragraph of the financial notes, we note that we have a net loss of 1.7 million, but keep in mind that includes the uh, disbursements from the special reserve funds. And if you look at the prior financial statement as of the end of uh, January, the year-to-date loss is about $375,000 less than as of the end of January, uh, mostly due to the receipt of real estate taxes. 
Uh, did anyone have any questions on any checks, any disbursements, any of the notes? Any anything regarding the financials? All right. Does anyone, could someone please uh, have a motion to approve the um, bills and salaries? I motion to approve the bills and salaries for uh, the current meeting, current month. Yep. For February 20, the checks in February, um, February, yes, February, yes, February 2022. Great. A, a I'll second. second. Thank you, Joan. Uh, Anthony or Director Austin, I think you need to do a roll call, please. Sure. Is there any other discussion? Questions? Okay. If no discussion, we'll go to a roll call. Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer. Yes. And Trustee Wolf. Yes. And Trustee McDonald. Yes. So the motion was moved by Trustee Wolf and seconded by Trustee Fishman. And six out of the six trustees present voted yes. At this point, we move to the action item. And uh, last, last month we met in special session to review, to evaluate Director Austin and to suggest and to recommend a salary. At that time, we came back, it was unanimous in the closed meeting and we reconvened an open meeting. However, we did not ratify his salary in open meeting. And so at this time, what I would like to do is what we did was basically we uh, what our recommendation was in terms of what we want to ratify is to increase the director's compensation by 5% to 138,600 retroactive from July 1st, 2021. And we also agreed to review the director's salary on an annual basis in conjunction with the start of each physical year and we just commended Director Austin for a wonderful job. So in terms of many of the things that he has done in spite of COVID. So at this time, can we have someone move to approve and ratify increasing a motion? Um, I move to approve and ratify increasing the director's salary consistent with the summary discussion at the last board meeting. Okay. I will second it. Okay. So it's been moved by Trustee Summer and seconded by Trustee Wolf to approve and ratify increasing the director's salary consistent with the summary discussion of the last board meeting. Can we have a roll call? Certainly. Uh, Trustee oh, Fish wait a minute. Is there any discussion before <laughs> we move on? Okay. Being none, you want to move on? Thank you. Austin. All right, Trustee Fishman. Yes. Uh, Trustee um, Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Yes. And Trustee McDonald. Yes. Thank you. And at this time, we're going to turn it over to Director Austin for the Capital Repairs Project Update. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, last Friday, we had um, uh, a late start. Um, we opened to the public at noon on Friday, and that was to complete our fire safety system tests and inspections um, that have been um, on our schedule for quite some time when we were finally able to get all the sources coordinated and uh, complete that process. Um, we passed our inspections, we passed our tests, and um, the uh, staff had their building evacuation drill and was able to successfully accomplish um, their normal procedures. This was the first such uh, safety drill that we've been able to conduct as a team um, since COVID. So it was good for us to get refreshed on that. And we've got a number of new staff. So it was their first opportunity to go through some of those fire exits and whatnot. Um, and it was also our first opportunity for staff to hear and experience the new fire alarm system and announcements. Um, so overall, it was a really successful day for us in terms of that morning and, and accomplishing a lot of the goals on this project. 
um, a real critical step forward for us in passing those inspections. Um, there are a couple inspections that do remain. Um, and that is really to test the electrical systems. Um, they require a final test and inspection. Um, and so that's gonna be done before public hours and shouldn't affect um, staff or our operations um, as we're gonna complete that uh, likely before 8.30 um, sometime in, in the course of the next two weeks as soon as they can coordinate that again with a number of the skilled trades that are gonna be joining us for that. Once that aspect is complete, the final punch list will be reviewed again. And I think that we're gonna be very darn near close to having this thing finalized. Um, we do keep a little retainage um, to, in order for us to hold on to um, our contractors in order to, uh, to get the project um, finalized and to, and to be able to close everything out. So we're hoping by the time we meet for next month's meeting um, that we'll be able to tell you that everything has been officially buttoned up on this project and we can put our uh, 2021 capital repair project behind us. Um, we've accomplished an awful lot with that project and I will provide a summary report for you about everything that we've accomplished um, once everything is finalized. Um, do you all have any questions about where we're at right now regarding the capital repair project? Okay. All right. Uh, that so all the alarms are in now and they work. That is correct. Good. Now I just lost, dropped my thing. So wait one minute, boom. Okay. So at this time, I'm gonna do a brief update of our strategic planning retreat that we had last Thursday at the Lakeview Center. It was the first time I think in the 10 years that I've been here that we had the one opportunity to meet with all the department heads, all the, or what do you call, the leadership team, I'm sorry. We're gonna call it right, the leadership team and all the trustees were present and we had two observers from the League of Women Voters. The order of the day was basically, we got to know each other a little, a little better from a um, exercise where there were some interesting questions asked. Uh, Director Austin gave us a wonderful update of trends and uh, of what's happening at Wilmette Public Library over the last several years. And then after that, we uh, broke up into groups. The, no, after that, we had department updates where department, we got to know a little bit more about department, the departments and all the par key departments were represented. But more important, we got to know their pain points in terms of to sort of help us shape some of our goals for the strategic plan. Following that, we had an aspiration exercise and then we had debrief. And so what the next steps are is Director Austin has gotten together all the notes. I know two of the trustees have sent him their notes and he will put, as well as the staff, and he will put together a summary of all our discussions as to what were some of the key objectives that we wanted to occur based on the aspiration exercise also just sort of look in terms of what's important things that a library should focus on on the next three years. And I think that will sort of stem it. We also looked at what the village had done because they've gotten about roughly 500 responses in terms of what makes the village special to, uh, you know, what our constituents value. So throughout that time, throughout this time, after we pulled together the strategic plan, and we will meet to discuss it. Uh, Director Austin is gonna take a look because many of the objectives that we had in the strategic plan for the last five years are still relevant. It's the strategies and tactics that will be used in terms to achieve those objectives. And so at that point in time, a meeting will be held with trustees and selected um, leadership team members to just sort of look at the results from what was said and what was stated as well as where we are and put together a draft. After we put together the draft of the strategic plan, we will then go look at those areas where it's important to get community input as to what their priorities are. And that will be done probably even after the strategic plan, after we look at some of the areas in terms of utilization of space, programs and their priorities. So that's about it. Does anybody else have anything that they would like to add? So Lisa, just to clarify, um, 
we are going to have some ideas wh which would be more helpful to us to have public input um, and would help direct us a little more than just sort of being more vague, like, you know, what do you like about the library? You know, what no, do you that mean? doesn't All no, of what, that would not be. Well, what, what, excuse me, what it'll be is say, for instance, you know, we'll do our, uh, and the areas, you know, some are areas are internal, some of them you need the response. So say, for instance, if we're looking at space and space utilization, we will have done a space evaluation. And so we will, and then in terms of what might be, and then at that point in time, I think, and that will be probably after the strategic plan, but that's just an example. And I think the park district has done a good job Winneka has Winneka Public Library has done a good job, and then ask them what their priorities are and how important is that. So I think it's easier to get the residents to respond to some actual ideas with the implications and the cost, mm -hmm. as opposed to just asking vague questions as to what you know, what makes it yeah, you know, what makes it relevant when you talk about diversity and inclusion and you want to see, which is one thing that they value, you know, you want the library to be a conduit to facilitate that so that you get a different response, you know, so that you get different opinions. How might the library do that? And so might have some, because I think the library does a pretty good job now in terms of if you look at one book and the different, you know, uh, last year it looked at, you know, Chinatown and some of the perceptions of Chinese in the past. I know it's done immigrants and you know they've done a whole lot, but just looking at ways that we can maybe find ways to build communities. And so there are a whole lot of ideas and you all will have some more ideas, but I think that's a start. And then just getting to our patrons and you know, both in when uh both in Kenilworth as well as Wilmette. What are their priorities? Are these, is this stuff that they're interested in as opposed to us just assuming? Does that answer? Uh, yeah, I think we're on the on the same wavelength with that. Um, yeah, more so. specifics as opposed to broad general, mm -hmm. because I know the last times, you know, we've gotten very good reviews when we've done a strategic plan in terms of we did a survey and there was high levels of satisfaction, but I don't think we addressed how they might be more satisfied and we might appeal to their need, you know, appeal to their interest. And are there different ways? Right, right, right. Okay. okay. Those are just some thoughts. But we'll talk about it when we all reconvene in terms of how we might engage the public a little bit more. Thank you. Okay. At this turn time, we'll turn it over. I got too many pages here. To Director Austin for the uh, Finance Committee meeting and Treasurer Summer. Sure, well, we're probably not taking any action on this here tonight, but um, we wanna get it on your radar that it is budget season. And um, it's gonna be very soon before we're gonna be um, getting together as a Finance Committee to talk about our budget for fiscal year 22-23. And so I wanted to get that, that on your radar. I'm going to be sending an email out to you here shortly with a doodle poll. Um, when you get that email, I'd like you to respond as soon as you can so that we can um, get some schedules uh, set up for a couple rounds of reviews of the draft budget. Um, so internally, we're working on that right now, and we're targeting early April for our first meeting to have that discussion so that we can summarize the information from that first meeting at our next regular board meeting next month on April 19th. So sometime between now and then, we'll get together as the Finance Committee. Uh, stay tuned for more. Okay, um, anything else on that? Otherwise, I'll move on to my report. Okay, um, I don't have an awful lot to cover this evening. February is a little bit shorter month, but I'll summarize. Um, I've, I've pulled out maybe six key points from my director's report. And if you've got any questions or other items that you'd like to pull and discuss, we can certainly get into those as well. Um, at our last meeting on the February 15th, we talked about a big event that happened that Saturday before, and it, it bears mention again tonight that on February 12th, we hosted Winterfest as part of 
the village's sesquicentennial celebration, and we had over a thousand attendees, or nearly a thousand attendees rather, come to the library that day. It was a remarkable day of events, and I've captured some of the information and some photos from that day in my report. I encourage you to take a look at that and see some of the events that we had. We're hoping that that is a signal of some um, uh, uh, future events that we're gonna be hosting here in the future. And um, hopefully that means that folks are getting ready to come back. Um, related to that, in the last month, I've also noted that our trending for door counts has actually gone up by about 100 people per day. So um, we're starting to see more traffic inside the library, which is good news for us. Um, and we've also been taking a number of uh, steps to start making things look a little bit more like they were pre-pandemic, at least since um, February. On February 28th, the library, along with a number of other businesses, local institutions, um, and statewide um, agencies um, relax the mask mandate. Uh, Wilmette Library went to a masks recommended environment. Um, we're, I'd say we're probably about 50-50 right now um, with the public when they're in the building. Um, uh, a number of our precautionary measures are evolving as we're, as we're kind of coming out of the pandemic right now. We're enjoying the fact that our community is largely vaccinated and has been very much compliant um, and respectful of one another when they've come in the building. Um, that said, there are a number of ways that we can start to um, reintroduce a number of our services and spaces to the way that they were pre-pandemic. Um, one of the changes that has taken place here in the last week or so is that um, a number of the acrylic barriers that we've had up at our service desks have come down. So if you've been in the library since this past weekend, you'll notice that the circulation desk is, is looking kind of spacious again. Um, our, our plexiglass barrier is down there. Um, and uh, at a number, and actually, I think pretty much all of our service desks at this point um, have moved into that environment. Um, we are going to start um, um, hosting programs more in person than we have. We're, we're continuing to offer hybrid options. As Lisa said at the top of this call, um, we're planning to have this be the last remote meeting that we're having for the board. Um, however, um, a number of the programs that the staff has scheduled will likely remain in a hybrid environment and even some of them will stay virtual for a period of time. Not all of the folks that we have contracted with for programming um, are ready to come back in person. Some of the events just don't translate very well to a virtual environment like, like music concerts and so on. And so we have elected to defer those until such a time that we can reschedule them and have them here in person. Um, but we're starting to schedule more of those programs for the, the coming months uh, to be in person. So we're excited about that. Um, the newsletter for the next cycle, which covers April, May, will be um, in homes here shortly. And um, let's see, so that you'll, you'll see some of the programming listed there. I think one of the biggest highlights that we have for this past month was the launch of the RFID systems on our self-checkout machines. Uh, the staff created a really fun video around this. Um, and uh, we've had tremendous success with the staff and, and uh, the public who have been using this product ever since we've launched it. Um, on page six of my report, you can see the background information about the steps that were involved in getting it up and running and how it operates. Um, speaking of circulation, um, our circulation is trending rather positively. I would say at this point, based upon our measures, we are back to 88% of where we were pre-pandemic in terms of our circulation. So while our door counts are still about half of what we were uh, pre-pandemic, circulation is still very strong and is improving. Um, we currently have 14,380 registered cards here at Wilmette Library in a community of 9,717 households, which means that nearly every household in town has a library card, which is really remarkable. Um, in addition to that, our staff and our public engagement rather with those library cards is really outstanding in that 68% of those cards have been used in just the last year alone. Um, so high rates of engagement and that is certainly reflected in our circulation numbers. Um, we had our winter reading program as well closed here in February on the 28th and our numbers were fairly consistent with last year. Um, in some areas they had improved. Um, well, they improved overall, um, but, but very small numbers nevertheless. Uh, it's a program I would like to see us continue to grow and build. Obviously, our summer reading program is our, one of our signature events and, and is our biggest draw. Um, we know a lot of folks do travel and have vacation plans during the winter, but that's no reason not to read. So we're going to see what we can do to motivate folks a bit more to participate in our program, whether it's through incentive prizes or just a little bit more publicity. So stay tuned for more on winter reading um, as we move forward. 
And then, uh, so there's, there's some images from, from winter reading as well in, in my packet. Um, the, the last item that I wanted to share with you is that we are actively recruiting for a member of our leadership team. The digital services manager position is posted and is open through the end of the month. Um, we're really excited about this opportunity. It's a tremendous opportunity for the library and for our department, um, as we really see a lot of potential for us to innovate and grow in that capacity um, with our new leader in that role. Um, that concludes kind of an overview of my report. Do you all have anything that you have questions about from my report or otherwise? Not at this time. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, that led now to uh, an update on the ILA and rails, and we'll turn it over to Trustee Nealon. Trustee Nealon, I need you to unmute. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it'll be nice next month. The going <laughs> Is it nice not to be the only one, Stuart? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I put together two um, uh, basically really helpful web pages on the um, uh, legislative activity or basically bills going through both um, Illinois uh, state legislature and um, federal bills that can benefit libraries. And um, in Illinois, I believe, and um, Anthony, correct if wrong, I think there is a bill on, um, oh my gosh, now I've totally need my notes. <laughs> Hold on a minute. All right, yes, yeah, state of Illinois legislation, a broadband um, for, uh, you know, to connect some libraries that are uh, in need of that and on um, ebook pricing, which is a situation that is, um, you know, of concern. Um, and then in um, the federal area, um, there are giant acts going on, American Rescue Plan Act, Build America's Libraries Act and Infrastructure Investment Jobs Act, all of which have implications for libraries. So. Um, I have a little cheat sheet I just threw together that I'm happy to send um, the trustees. It, I just pulled it off um, the ILA website, but it's all in one place. So I'll send that out to you. And if you have friends that are interested in um, uh, uh, doing witness slips or uh, talking to Congress people, uh, these are very worthwhile topics in, in our area. So uh, that's what I wanted to share. And I'll send that out right after this meeting. Director Austin, is there any way we would ever put that those bills in terms of that are impacting library and usage on our website? Or is that not? I'm not sure in terms of advocacy if these are if these are mm -hmm. topics that are immediately directly affecting us in a in a substantial way. Um, okay. Ebook price. I mean, um, the library clearly has its broadband um, networking fine. That, that's. Uh, mm -hmm. I think a number of other agencies are challenged in that way. Ebook pricing affects all libraries. So the Equitable Access to um, Electronic Literature Act is what um, Trustee Nealon was referring to. Um, there's it, this is a national issue, and there's a lot of a lot of matters that are of concern with the pricing for ebooks. Um, so I do think that, that that is one area that we're concerned, um, but it is not such that it's affecting the funding of the library. So I don't know that that's an issue that we necessarily need to get our community um, rallying behind us in terms of an advocacy. Um, I think the impacts locally are less substantial here than they may be with some other districts. Thank you. Do you want to continue? Both uh, Trustee Nealon and Wolf attended the meeting would you intergovernmental um trustee wolf are you here do you want to <laughs> do you want to pick that up oh unmute Stuart. oh unmute again oh my god sorry sorry okay how about now yes can you hear me you're good you're good okay thank you thank you uh, whoever did okay so um yes yeah, so it was a very it was a very good meeting very productive meeting um uh, Kate Jaya, who chairs it, made sure she said it an hour and we were done in less than an hour. And we basically, the combined boards from across the village entities um, in talking about um, ways to focus on um, green initiatives uh, and, 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 uh, and things related to that. Um, the consensus was to try to, to look into the possibility of getting a, uh, a part-time paid um, 
uh, person who would work uh, maybe at the village, but kind of coordinate all the efforts among the different um, village entities so that we're not being redundant and in, a, in essence can kind of support one another and what we're doing and how we're doing it. So that's where things stand right now is, is um, uh, Mike uh, Brayman is looking into the, the, um, the uh, looking to other, other uh, villages and what they've done that we could possibly uh, use a similar type model. Uh, and the other thing that came up too was the idea of working on an on a focus to what can we do to to encourage civility um, between interactions between um, the public and the various boards in the village, and also I think between uh, board members themselves. So it was kind of the idea is that we obviously in the culture we're in right now there has been kind of a trend away from being civil, and and what can we do to set good examples and and, and good comfortable environments to to exchange ideas and hear one another. And again, lead to uh, to, to very uh, positive discourse, con constructive versus destructive discourse. Well, thank you both for serving on the, that committee. Does anyone have any other questions for directors? Well, okay. Or I do want to say if senior. if anybody, any of our um, trustees have um, content areas to suggest. Um, now, I think. Um, KHI has the idea of having these big areas to look at first, like sustainability, and then we might move on to um, just other areas I, I, um, that are, uh, I suppose civility could be another area, but if you have other ideas, like just please share them with, with Stuart and, and myself. Okay, Director Austin, do you have anything to add regarding rails? Okay, he has nothing. Okay, we're going to switch on now to uh, information items, communications. You all all got uh, from one of our patrons regarding the tree and mulch in terms of it being the volcano. And so Chalet will be coming. And so uh, it Marcos will be discussing it with them. So it will be handled that way. Do you have anything else to add, Director Austin, in terms of comments? Okay. I just, I just have one question. I um 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 I hope when I when I I sent a, a board related com uh, you know comment about it just to make sure that we responded to this patron. Um, I didn't keep that patron in the email conversation. So so did you, Lisa? Or are you, Anthony? No, Director Austin. Question? Director Austin will respond to him. Okay, good. I, I assume so, but I just want to make sure that that was. I didn't mean to confuse. No, that, it didn't but, slip through. <laughs> okay, good. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. okay. Any other comments or communications that you've gotten, Director Austin? Okay. Moving on, uh, you'll be at the PLA from March 22nd to 26th in Portland, Oregon. How many staff will be attending it remotely, virtually? Um, I'm, I'm aware of one. There, there may be others that are still coming. Mm -hmm. And it's open to trustees as well, as the, although I did say that there aren't any specific programs that are oriented towards trustees at PLA this time around. ILA typically does a better job of getting the trustee related programming. However, if you if you go to the website and you see some programs of interest, um, you're more than welcome to attend. Just let me know and I can get you registered. I sent you all a notice regarding United for United. Libraries and a lot of times United for Libraries are basically for and the trustees. And a lot of times they would have separate meetings at the American Library Association. So if you need me to resend it, I've signed up to take two of the courses, but they do something every month that pertains to trustees. So I can resend that to you all. Thank you. Okay, the village of Wilmette is celebrating its 150th birthday. And so at this point in time, they're looking for sponsors for bricks or trees. If anybody needs me to send information, to them, I will. And at the end of this month, they're going to have their uh, interdenominational choir. And so the library will be promoting it. And so the library is working hand in hand, especially Eva, who is in charge of genealogy. And so what they've been doing is with a, a historical society, they put together a kit, because we talked about it, but they've got a kit that you can check out and do interviews with the digital and then it and they will find a way to 
I think, put them all together and make them public. So that's what's happening there. And if you just go to the website page, which is listed in the agenda, you can see everything on that's happening there. Okay. And then uh, do you want to talk about one book everyone reads, Director Austin? I would just say stay tuned for um, the information is going to be in the next newsletter um, telling you more about the programming that we have associated with our one book title, Three Girls from Bronzeville by Dawn Turner. Okay. Is there any new Can I yes. make one comment? If no one is, if I, I actually, is anyone, I read the book. It is excellent. And I'm going to encourage all the trustees to also read it. Um, it's quite good. I think it's really good, particularly, you know, living up here in a very, not a culturally diverse community, understanding what, you know, what life is like in other people around Chicago. So I enjoyed the book because I know the author because her father in law, who she talks about, was my father's good friend. Really? And so it was fascinating to learn about he and his wife because it was just a, and, but what I most enjoyed about the book was how two kids from the same family turn out so differently. So I think we all can yep. relate to that. So I'm looking forward to all the things you got in. Well, okay, any other new business? I, I was gonna say, I enjoyed it too. So looking forward to her presentation. Okay, any other new business? Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? I will motion to adjourn. Okay, Stuart has mo has motion to adjourn the meeting for the Wilmette Public Library at 7.08. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, it's been moved by Trustee Wolf and seconded by Trustee Fishman to move to adjourn the meeting. All in favor? I don't think we have to have a roll call. Is that correct? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It was unanimous. Have a good evening. And we adjourned at 7.08 p.m. This is the shortest uh, meeting I've ever been a part of as a board member. <laughs>